In Gaza today, health officials are reporting multiple deaths in Israeli airstrikes on a central regional community. The local Palestinian news agency says at least 13 people, mainly women and children, were killed when Israeli warplanes hit a school being used as a temporary shelter. A family of nine, as well as three journalists, also died in other incidents. But there is new hope for an end to the bloodshed. Talks on a ceasefire and hostage release deal are set to take place next week. Journalist Iris Mackler is following the latest developments, and she joins us now from Jerusalem. Iris, after weeks of deadlock, Hamas is reportedly dropping a key demand. What can you tell us? I can tell you that over the past 72 hours, Hamas has been um, letting it be known that they have agreed to the US-backed plan, now also the UN-backed plan, for a phased ceasefire deal, uh, an exchange of Israeli hostages for Palestinian prisoners, and most importantly, a six-week ceasefire while the first phase is done. So one of the things that they have said, they said reflects their own flexibility, was that they had previously demanded that Israel commit up front to a long-term ceasefire before the ceasefire commences, they've dropped that. Now, you could say it's only semantics, but it's semantics that moves this along. And I think what we're hearing from them and what we're seeing for the first time in weeks is that there's a deal on the table and the possibility for discussion. What about Israel, Iris? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is under immense pressure domestically and from the international community to strike a deal, yet he's always insisted Hamas must be eliminated. Is he likely to compromise now? There's lots of pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu, and the first bit comes from the ground up. That's the relative of the relatives of the hostages who are held there uh, in Gaza at the moment, and it's protesters across Israel. So we've been seeing protests growing in size and growing across Israel in locations as well. And tomorrow is the 7th of July. It makes it exactly nine months since the 7th of October attacks by Hamas, which began this. What you're hearing from people on the ground is it's just too long and they want a hostage deal. In fact, speaking earlier tonight, we heard from a number of hostages. One of them spoke in English. Um, sorry, a number of hostages' relatives. One of them spoke in English. Let's hear what he had to say. For the first time in many months, we feel there is a spark of hope. For the first time, we all feel that we are closer than ever to getting our loved ones back. This is an opportunity that cannot be missed. Netanyahu, we saw you sabotage the deal over and over again at the moment of truth. And each time, our hearts shattered. Do not dare break our hearts again. Only massive public pressure will ensure this deal goes through. Take to the streets every day. Together, we will make this deal a reality and save lives. So you can see the kind of pressure that's coming from the ground up. Netanyahu has a very difficult coalition government in that some of those, some of the parties, right-wing, extremist right-wing, say they don't want a coalition deal until Hamas is defeated. So Benjamin Netanyahu knows he could pass this deal through the parliament, but would his government survive? And there are fears on the ground, as we heard, and within the parliament, that if it comes to a choice between the hostages uh, and his, the, the survival of his government, he would choose the survival of his government. So you can see the enormous pressures on him, and it's up to, I, I think, now is the time that the deal is back on the table to see which, where, he will, where he will lead since he is such a powerful leader of this government. All right. Thanks for this, Iris. Journalist Iris Mackler in Jerusalem.